Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to our second week of our month all about hormones. So I am multitasking like usual on Tuesdays. I am on my webinar that I do weekly, and I am also on Instagram Live for those of you that don't know about the webinar. And I have this amazing filter on Instagram Live, and I'm like, oh, my hair is glowing. I wish Webinar Jam also had uh, the filter. But uh, but welcome, everyone. So as we talk about hormones tonight, um, we're really going to be uncovering a lot of information that you potentially have not heard before to really help you understand why you may have so many ups and downs with your hormones and why you are not necessarily getting the answers that you're looking for, but you're also potentially not necessarily having someone connect the dots. And that's really uh, what I specialize in, as well as my practice, is really looking at the body from an integ integrated perspective. So today we're talking more about some of the infections that we can actually have that are associated with the reproductive organs that can actually throw off our hormones. Um, and especially, I feel like sometimes women can make sense of the idea of having a lot of yeast infections and a lot of bacterial vaginosis and how that could potentially play a role in their hormones being off, considering that as a reproductive organ. But a lot of women suffer from chronic urinary tract infections and think that that is com a completely separate entity and that has nothing to do with their thyroid problem or their other hormonal imbalance. So tonight, we're really going to connect the dots to help you understand the bigger picture. And I'm not just going to talk about hormones. I'm also going to help you understand that maybe your hormones are truly off because of a thyroid problem or because of, you know, reproductive infections. But we're also going to touch on how your neurotransmitters, your brain hormones like serotonin and um, dopamine, the hormones that make us feel good, can actually play a very significant role in your hormones. And we're also going to talk about just the overall functionality of your gut and your brain and how they can also play a role in your hormones. So we're going to cover a lot. I'm going to keep it super simple, I promise you, and be able to um, allow you guys to walk away really feeling like you understand what might be going on with you as well as what might be the cause to your hormone problems. So for those of you that are joining me on the webinar, I am going to use my PowerPoint primarily just because I don't want to go off on a tangent. Um, and those of you that are on Instagram Live, at any point, if you guys have questions, pop them into either the chat box or the comment area because I am going to answer them as we go. Uh, in addition to that, for those of you on Instagram Live, if you do want full access to the webinar, I can always send you the replay because uh, Instagram does cut me off in an hour. So again, thank you guys for being here. Um, like I said before, we're really going to touch on having you understand what you might not know about your hormone imbalance. What are the tests that maybe you have not accessed just yet? And then what could be some of the root causes as to why your hormones are actually off? So just to kind of set the foundation, some of you I know are listening are new, some of you are not. So for those of you that are new, just to kind of understand the premise of, I don't want to say integrative medicine, I want to say our style of integrative medicine is the foundation of our practice was found on always kind of challenging what we were taught and what was what the textbook told us was correct. Because what we found as practitioners is as we got into clinical practice, very rarely did the person, the real life person actually match the textbook. And that kind of throws a whole wrench in your treatment protocol as a new doctor. So overall, it kept us learning and growing and evolving, and it got us to a place that we, we look at the body in a very different way than we did early on in practice, and we look at it as an integrative integration of systems, and then all of our protocols to help you heal are integrative as well. And this is why we're able to get better people better in a short amount of time, which is really, really exciting. So for myself, everybody always asks, like, what's my specialty? What do I do? And for myself, I call myself an integrative medicine physician. But overall, I deal with the mystery cases. I deal with the people that haven't necessarily been able to get answers through their conventional methods or conventional testing. And I work with an array of different people. I work with kids. I work with autoimmune conditions. I work with hormone conditions. I work with neurological conditions. And the reason why I can work with such an array of people is because it's not about the diagnosis. It's not even really about your symptoms. It's about what is the root 
What is the foundation that is causing the snowball of symptoms that you have? Because when we look at the laundry list of symptoms associated with like hypothyroidism, fatigue, temp or uh, our temperature is like out of balance, we're cold a lot, our hair is thinning, our nails are brittle. A lot of us can relate to that, especially as females. And we put the stamp on of thyroid. But there are so many things that can affect your thyroid and there are so many things that your thyroid can affect. So we need to look at the bigger picture here and understand that anything can cause anything. And that's not to overwhelm you, it's just to know that you might be dealing with rheumatoid arthritis, a thyroid condition and depression, and everyone's thinking that those are separate entities, but actually at the end of the day, they're all connected. So for myself, I don't have the story for you that I was super sick and nobody could figure it out and then I went to an integrative facility or a functional medicine doctor and they were able to nurse me back to health. Um, my story is actually kind of the opposite. I thought that I was super healthy. I thought that I was doing everything right. I was conscious of my diet um, to what I knew. I tried to work out all the time. I, I really tried to do the right thing. and. What I realized is that there were a lot of things that became my normal. The fatigue, I would blame it on, oh, I didn't get good enough sleep. Oh, my stomach, oh, I ate out. Oh, I ate too much. Oh, I ate too much bread. Uh, you know, if I was dealing with brain fog in school, you know, struggling to study, it was just like, oh, maybe I'm not cut out for this, this field, or maybe I'm not good at science. So there were a lot of things that came to fruition when I did my testing and I realized I wasn't very healthy at all. And there were a lot of things that I just adapted to that became my normal. And this is a lot of people. And the problem too is that most of the people around us, our friends and our family also feel like crap. Everybody's tired. Everybody has brain fog. Nobody can remember anything. Everybody's achy. Everybody has occasional stomach aches. And it's just the normal. And we think that we're healthy if we are in less pain or less tired than the people we know. So the point is, is that you don't know what you don't know until you do the right testing. So I know that it is a little bit late right now, and I know there's a lot of things going on around us, but I want to give you guys the opportunity to shut down the email browser, you know, tell your kids to be quiet, tell your husband to leave you alone. Um, or your wife, um, just to give yourself some time to really tune, tune in, even if you give me the next 15 to 20 minutes of your time, because the things that I'm going to talk about tonight are not your run of the mill. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to be gluten free because that's going to heal your hormones. I'm not going to tell you about the magical supplement that heals everybody's thyroid. I'm actually going to give you real life understanding of why hormonal problems exist, but also how you can self analyze to understand what is your issue? What are some of the things that what I'm saying resonate with you. So give yourself this opportunity to just stick with me for the next 20 minutes. I promise you it will be well worth it. So first and foremost, I want you all to know the people that are listening that have tried functional medicine, they've tried integrative medicine, they've tried to change their diet, they've tried to take all the best supplements in the world, and you failed. I want you to know that it's not your fault. And it's not your fault because it's impossible for you to know the intricacies of your body. It's impossible for you to know what's wrong if you haven't had the right testing. And it's impossible for you to know what's wrong if you're being looked at as a, a bunch of separate systems and nobody is looking at you as a whole. So it's not your fault that you fell flat and it's not your fault that maybe you got overwhelmed with all of the information out there of the paleo diet and the vegan diet and the, you know, I don't even keto diet. And you're just like, I don't even know what's for me. So I'm just going to, I'm going to give up because it's a lot of information to navigate. And there's a lot of good in a lot of those diets. It's just, you need to figure out what's right for you. And what's great about that is there's testing to reveal that. It's not just about winging it essentially. So one of the most important slides for you guys to understand before we talk all about hormones is just the foundation of the mindset and foundation of the way integrative practitioners look at the body. And that really starts with the body is not a bunch of separate systems. So when we work with all these specialists that are, are segregating our systems and we're working with our heart palpitations with our cardiologists and we're working on our gut issues with our gastroenterologist and then we're working on our depression with our psychiatrist or psychologist, everybody is assuming that 
Nothing is interconnected. And this brings me to just the the lack of understanding basic physiology. Our basic physiology tells us that 90 to 95% of your serotonin, your feel-good hormone, is made in your gut. So if you're depressed, but you also have irritable bowel, we can't just ignore one or the other, and we can't treat them separately. We need to treat them together in a really, really strategic way. And this really goes for some of the things we're talking about tonight when it comes to urinary tract infections and and vaginal uh, infections. So sometimes I feel like there's a big lack of just understanding anatomy. A lot of um, infections that we can acquire, like let's use a really simple example as the thyroid and the, I'm sorry, the tonsils, because the tonsils being in the throat is very, very, very close proximity to the thyroid. And your dental, your teeth, and all those fillings and those root canals and all those things in your mouth, that is also very close to your thyroid. So just based off of being in a bad location, you could have certain infections that were in your tonsils that moved into your lymph nodes, then which then started to affect your thyroid. And the same thing goes, urinary tract and vaginal tract are right next to each other. And it is very, very common that I see the same infections in the vaginal tract that I see in the urinary tract and vice versa. So we need to consider all factors because if you're constantly getting, you know, being told you have a yeast infection, but it keeps coming back, it might be because you haven't resolved the urinary tract and that's where it's coming from. So we're going to talk more about this and have a better understanding of it. So another common question that I get that I want to answer before you guys ask me is uh, everyone always asks, why doesn't everybody do what you guys do? Why doesn't everybody think about the body the way you do? And the, the easiest answer is that most of our testing that we do on a monthly or I'm sorry, a yearly basis is blood work. And blood work is a type of testing that is based on chemistry or biochemistry. So if you have changes in your biochemistry or abnormalities in your biochemistry dictated by your blood results, then the way that we're going to fix that is by using chemistry altering substances, which is pharmacology, it's medicine. So medicine is for profit. Uh, I think most of us know this at this point, but the foundation of the testing is to dictate what medications are appropriate to fix your abnormal biochemistry. There are so many other modalities that we classify as alternative. I think that they're, you know, they should just be the standard, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, but there's so many other ways to go about the body. And also, even if you want to just rely on fixing the chemistry, you can still do that through herbs and, and supplements and vitamins. So it's really just kind of taking all these pieces into consideration to know what is best for your system. And it's also getting away from the idea that it's a one size fits all treatment. You know, honestly, when I watch TV, uh, which is very rarely, but I mainly always notice how many um, uh, big pharma uh, commercials I see. And it's just like promoting that there's going to be this one pill that's going to fix all of your problems. And that's just not the reality of the body because the body is so intricate and there's so many things communicating with each other. And, you know, your brain being a control center and your pituitary gland in your brain being the control center of your hormones. Like if we are just trying to piece things and and work with these separate systems, we're not necessarily going to be able to fix the body as a whole. And we're not going to be able to create any type of sustainability. All we do is mask the symptoms and create a Band-Aid effect. So I want to tell you guys a really interesting story uh, because this was one of my early cases of a woman who came to me talking about her hormones. And she was just like, my hormones, my hormones, they're so off. I can't get them in balance. I can't lose weight. I feel terrible. You know, I'm constantly freezing. My hair's falling out. And she really did have all of the traditional symptoms of having hormonal imbalance and a thyroid condition. So we did her lab work and it definitely revealed that her hormones were off, but there was more going on that was being missed. And one of our really unique technologies that we have in the office is called bioresonance. 
the, the bioresonance ha is able to pick up on the DNA of the body. It also has the ability to pick up on foreign DNA. So foreign DNA can come from uh, yeast, fungus, bacteria, all different types of infections. Hi. Uh, so with that being said, um, she was talking about how in the past she had to get surgery to remove polyps out of her uterus. And that when they went in, they actually found that she had over 30 polyps in her uterus. And she ended up having to do, you know, a pretty serious surgery. And she ended up having to go back because some of the polyps came back about a year later. So as she was telling me this, this is kind of a red flag. And I was just like, okay, there's something obviously that's really, really stressing this area. Um, she did report that she had a lot of yeast infections when she was a teen into her 20s, but she didn't really have much as an adult. So when we dug in, what we found out was that one of her biggest problems in her system that was affecting her thyroid, it was also affecting her joints uh, because she also had rheumatoid arthritis and it was affecting her uterus was strep. And yes, this is the strep that people get in their throat. Strep is one of those bacteria that is off people's radar because they think it's only associated with a sore throat. I find strep in people's knees. I find strep in people's sinuses. And I find strep in people's uterus, which can sometimes cause endometriosis and sometimes it can cause polyps. So this was a woman that was completely ridden with strep. And you may be thinking, well, why couldn't she get rid of it? Like why wouldn't her immune system get rid of it? Or why wouldn't antibiotics get rid of it? So antibiotics, you know, they can definitely play their role, but if there's an overuse of antibiotics, especially when kids are young with ear infections and sore throats, you can definitely build a resistance and the strep can build a resistance against the, the antibiotic. There are a lot of organisms that have evolved and they have evolved past, um, the, the defenses that we use like antibiotics and strep is a, a definitely a big part of that puzzle. But when it comes to strep, it can move around via the lymph vessels. So I don't want to get overly complicated with the lymph, but when you're sick and all of this hurts in here, that's not just your glands. Those are your lymph nodes as well. And lymph is in your breasts. You have lymph vessels that run through the body. So you literally have lymph everywhere. So if the strep gets into the lymphatic system, it can move and travel through the vessels and get to other parts of the body. And this can be a huge culprit behind thyroid conditions and different types of reproductive issues, let alone the fact that this woman also had a lot of fungus or yeast. So this will be the real kicker for you guys. So most of us have used tampons at some point in our lives or we still use them, or we've used them most of our lives. So tampons are traditionally cotton, and unfortunately, a lot of cotton, and even a lot of grains, wheat, things like that, are grown and have mold on them. So there are things called mycoestrogens, which I will circle back to, but the point is, is that cotton, depending on how and where it is grown, can be moldy. And then you are putting that into one of the most absorbent parts of your body, your vaginal tract, and then you are pretty much creating fungus that is getting absorbed into the mucous membranes and is going to cause chronic yeast infections. So this is extremely, extremely important for you guys to understand because this happens a lot. And the mycoestrogens is a compounding factor here because myco is for mycotoxins, which is mold and fungus. So there are certain types of molds that can mimic estrogen in the body. So one of the other more common things that I see is that women have very elevated estrogen levels. And yes, that can be for a lot of reasons. Birth control is one of them. But another reason is if you have exposure to mycoestrogens through mycotoxins on your tampons. Again, mold for those of you that are just hopping on. So you could be having chronic yeast infections just by using tampons is the point of what I'm saying. 
So this is just something, again, to take into consideration. And sometimes it's just about moving into organic tampons, but otherwise you can also um, utilize different uh, other types of strategies. My personal favorite is the Thinx underwear. It's T-H-I-N-X. Um, the Thinx underwear are literally underwear that act as a pad. I know that sounds crazy, but I swear they work amazing. So check them out on their website. You'll love them. Okay, so as we start diving deeper into the hormone piece here, so I want you to understand that when it comes to your hormonal imbalances, there are many, many factors to consider. So I just blew your guys' minds with the whole tampon situation. But in addition to that, there is tons of estrogens or you know phytoestrogens that we're getting exposed to through our food, which I'm gonna elaborate more on. Then there are tons of different chemicals that are hormone disruptors that are in our personal products, our shampoos, our conditioners, our lotions, our tampons, all that stuff. And then we have different things that not a lot of people are talking about, like blood sugar instability and poor circulation that can play a role in your hormones. And I say this because blood sugar and circulation play a very significant role on your brain and your pituitary gland, which is the control center. Stress. Stress suppresses all of your hormones because stress in your body is equivalent to fight or flight. Fight or flight is you're in the woods about to fight a tiger or run. So if you're going to fight that tiger or run, there is something your body is not preoccupied with, and that is having a baby. So all of your hormones get put on the back burner to funnel adrenaline to your stress. The crazy thing is, is that your body doesn't know the difference between stress from getting eaten by a tiger versus an email you got from your boss telling you you suck at your job. <laughs> so as much as our bodies have evolved, there are some pieces that are still very based on our ancestors. Gut issues can play a very significant role on our hormones, and that's primarily because different toxins that come from the infections in our gut will shut down our pituitary function as well. So that can definitely be a big, big part of why we're not getting our hormones to improve. And then what we've already started talking about is infections. And this is anything from actual vaginal infections, from the yeast infections to bacterial vaginosis, or even STDs, but it also can be associated with chronic urinary tract infections as well. So let's dive into these things. So the myths about your hormones is, PMS is normal. I think all of us at some point are just like, well, this sucks, but I guess it's just normal. And then we get told that food has nothing to do with our hormones. Usually our endocrinologists or our, gyne our gynecologists are saying, no, food has nothing to do with it. There's nothing you could do to change your diet that will help your hormones. And then we also get told that, you know, hormones will mess with our mood, but that's PMS, but there's actually not a physiological connection, which there is, and I'm gonna show you guys what that means. And then hormones are not impacted by infections in your body. And I'm not talking like infections you're aware of. I'm talking about low grade infections that make you feel super tired and like crap every day that nobody's able to decipher because they're not doing the right testing on you. And the last but not least is hormones are, have nothing to do or not are not impacted by toxicity, which is another lie. So we're going to talk about all of these now. Okay, so let's bust the myth about PMS here. So number one is PMS is not normal, and as much as the, as much of the population that deals with it, it is not normal. And one of the primary reasons that we get PMS is because we do not have adequate amounts of serotonin. Serotonin is made in the front of your brain, by the way. So this could be you don't have a lot of serotonin because of a head injury. You don't have a lot of a, a lot of serotonin because you've depleted it through a bad diet and having really imbalanced blood sugar. In addition to that, you can also have PMS because your body is dealing with a low grade infection that you are unaware of. Hormones are made from fatty acids. That's what we must get from food. Heck yes, Hirschberger. <laughs> um, so this is one of the more interesting things that I learned over time is when you are approaching your menstrual cycle, 
your body is kind of funneling all of its energy to prepare for your menstrual cycle. So what that means is that if your energy was directed towards something else, like dealing with a low-grade infection, maybe it's a low-grade urinary tract infection that you have zero symptoms, maybe it's a low-grade yeast infection that you have zero symptoms, maybe it's a low-grade strep infection in your tonsils or your sinuses that you don't have any symptoms, or maybe you have mild symptoms. So then your immune system is busy, 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 using up all your energy to take care of all of that. And then menstrual cycle comes around and goes, hey, no, no, I need the energy now. I need you to derail because I need all those energy resources to get ready for the menstrual cycle. So this is the reason why PMS looks different for every female. Some women get migraines. Some women get diarrhea. Some women get fatigue. Some women get irritable. It's not the same across the board. So why does it look different? It looks different because what is going on in the background that is not being figured out or not being understood? And a lot of this comes back to immune system stress. And for those of you that are sitting here being like, eh, that's not me, that's not possible. I will tell you right now, it is impossible for you to be walking around toxin and infection free in this day and age. It is completely impossible. And I say this because there is so much crap we're being exposed to just by food. There, and, and even if you're eating as healthy as possible, you know, for those of you that are listening that are farmers, like, you know, food comes from the ground. There's bugs on it. There is bacteria on everything we eat. But if you're immune compromised, that bacteria can cause problems. If your immune system is strong, it doesn't cause problems. So it's important to just understand that chances are you are dealing with toxins and infections. And if you can work on those or build your immune system back up, you might actually resolve your PMS altogether. Number two, kind of already started to talk about this, is food and hormones. So food can expose us to a lot of toxins, but there are many things in the food that are disrupting our hormones. And the example that I use all the time, especially with my older clientele that do not get the whole eating organic thing, is I always say to them, I go, do you notice how females that are, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 look like they're 18, 19, 20 years old? They're developed, they have breasts, they, they're tall, they, they look like women. And part of this is the massive amounts of hormones that we are being exposed to. And we definitely, we're seeing this in boys too. We're seeing boys that have bellies, but the skinny arms and legs. We see boys that are developing like uh, tissue around their nipples. Um, gynecomastia is what it's called. We're seeing this a lot. And a lot of this has to do with the growth hormone that is being pumped into the animals through industrial farming. Um, most of the animals are being fed soy. And then in addition to that, we have the molds that grow on some of the crops like peanuts and wheat and rice and cotton, which cotton seed, I know people don't eat cotton, but cotton seed oil is the most common cheap frying oil when you eat fried food. So all of those foods are grown and usually have some level of mold on them. And some of those molds are mycoestrogens and they disrupt your hormones by increasing your estrogen levels. So one of the most common mycoestrogens is on corn. So not only are we getting mycoestrogens from corn, but they're also genetically modifying the corn. So we're getting a double whammy here. So we really need to start paying attention to the things that we eat because, you know, honestly, I went through a period of time that I was extremely stressed out about food. And I was extremely stressed out about food because when you start learning about all the crap that's in your food, you're just like really overwhelmed. But one of the things that I took away was that if I can keep my immune system healthy and if I can keep my body's ability to filter the bad stuff out, if I can keep that working well by keeping my liver healthy, keeping my gut healthy, then that's really the best that I can do because the last thing I want to do is live in a bubble. So I don't want you guys to be overwhelmed by the information. I want you to know that it's not necessarily just about navigating away from these foods, but it's also about making sure your body can actually get rid of this stuff. 
So one of the really interesting things about our hormones also connected to our mood is we kind of think that, you know, oh, I'm, I'm PMSing, so I'm irritable, et cetera. But sex hormones actually play a significant role on our neurotransmitters and neurotransmitters play a significant role on our sex hormones. So one of the fascinating things is that you actually need adequate amounts of estrogen in order to have serotonin be absorbed by the receptors. So you could be taking an SSRI or an antidepressant to really try to amp up your serotonin, but if you don't have adequate amounts of estrogen, then you're not going to be able to actually use any of that serotonin. So it's not always about just putting it into the body. It's always about absorption. And this goes for literally anything. This goes for any vitamin, any B vitamin, any vitamin D, any mineral. You have to actually absorb these things. If you're peeing bright yellow, you're not absorbing it. So you need to reevaluate so you're not just wasting hundreds of dollars that are literally going down the toilet, literally, because you're urinating them out. So it's really important to know that there is definitely a synergy when it comes to these uh, neurotransmitters and your sex hormones as well. And for those of the, uh, for those of you that are listening that are men, which I doubt there's many, but you can go and tell your husbands or boyfriends, is that one of the really fascinating things about testosterone is low testosterone is equivalent to having low dopamine levels. So dopamine is very much associated with addictive behaviors. So if you have a spouse or a loved one that is struggling with addiction, struggling, you know, with cigarettes or even just struggling to get off soda, then they might actually be dealing with low testosterone levels. And that might be the reason why they cannot kick that that habit. So there is a huge interconnection when it comes to neurotransmitters and hormones. And another big piece of it, too, is when you're dealing with low dopamine, like I said, that can kick up your addictive behaviors. But as a female, it can actually really lower your progesterone levels, which will throw off your menstrual cycle and could potentially even cause you to not get your menstrual cycle at all. So so it's it's definitely extremely intertwined. And it's a matter of being able to know how to deal with these things in a strategic way, because it's not that you necessarily need to address the neurotransmitters and the hormones. You need to figure out which is the foundational problem. Is it the, hor is it the sex hormones or is it the brain hormones or is it an immune system problem? So it's taking a, a deeper look at the body and doing the right testing. So I've already kind of talked about this with the hormones and the infections, but for those of you that are just hopping on, um, just again, when it comes to infections, infections are going to create stress on the immune system, which is going to create a lot of inflammation and it's going to completely derail our body focusing on keeping our hormones balanced. But secondary to that, depending on where our infections are located, can contribute to different organs being stressed. So number one is if you have a lot of sinus and throat issues or you had your tonsils removed because you had th so many throat issues, then you could easily have a thyroid problem that is associated with infections that are in your sinuses, in your mouth, in your gums, including cold sores, or in your tonsils. So it's almost like one of my patient's husbands uh, was was with her when I was talking about her thyroid condition. And I loved what he said, but he said, you're, so you're saying her thyroid is in a bad neighborhood. And I was like, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I thought that was just a really, really great example of, of having people understand it. So your thyroid might not necessarily need to be addressed, but the surrounding area needs to be addressed to clean up the infections, to get rid of maybe those toxic fillings you have in your teeth or to help you get rid of your sinus issues. And that could potentially be the reason why your thyroid is off in the first place. Secondary to that is the reproductive organs. So as much as we always say the brain is the control center, the pituitary gland that talks to the thyroid and the adrenals and the reproductive, but those organs talk back. The reproductive organs talk back to the brain. So everything is communicating with each other in a very synchronized manner. So if you are constantly dealing with reproductive um, yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, 
um, different types of urinary tract infections, you could easily have that create a major, major stress on the neurological system as well, which will continue to throw off your hormones. So it can work top down, but it can work bottom up as well. And for those of you that are new, that are just hopping on, I already talked about the role of tampons, but tampons going into the vaginal tract being one of the most absorbent areas is one of the leading reasons why women get yeast infections. And it's because cotton that is not necessarily organic cotton is typically grown and has been affected by fungus or mold. Mold, fungus, yeast, it's all the same family. So that can be a big culprit as to why you are dealing with chronic yeast infections. Another thing too is C-section scars or really any scars for any type of pelvic uh, surgeries. So when you have a C-section scar, you can easily have an accumulation of scar tissue that starts to create a lot of adhesions in your reproductive organs. This can create scar tissue around your fallopian tubes and cause you to be at risk for something called ectopic pregnancies. You can develop scar tissue around your uterus, which is what we call endometriosis. You can develop scar tissue around your ovaries, which can be confused for cysts. So it's very important to also not ignore the fact that you may have had two or three C-sections and that might be playing a role in your reproductive stress or your hormonal, hormonal imbalance as a whole. So really last but not least is toxicity. So when it comes to toxicity, there are so, so, so many toxins in our personal products. And I am talking about specific types of toxins that are classified as hormone disruptors. And this is everything from parabens to xenoestrogens, BPA, phthalates, pesticides, dioxin. So for you, those of you that are like, I don't know what that is, that's okay. Um, what I would recommend for you to do is get an app called Think Dirty. Um, Think Dirty is a free app you can download onto your phone. And you can actually start looking at your personal products and decipher, are they super toxic? And do they contain these different chemicals that I have listed here? So these chemicals are known to disrupt our hormones, elevate our estrogen levels, and completely throw off our hormonal access. So it's important for us to not only avoid these, but also to potentially help our bodies detox from what we've already been exposed to. Because unfortunately, a lot of our personal products, we're putting on extremely absorbent areas. We're putting lotion on our skin. We're massaging shampoos and conditioners into our scalp. Like our skin is crazy, crazy absorbent. And I think a lot of people don't understand that, but think about it. Think about bioidentical hormones or hormone replacement. Most of them are creams or, or sometimes they're pellets. Like that's because the skin is that absorbent. So we need to take into consideration, like what are we putting on our skin? What are we absorbing every day? Like from our perfumes and all of these lovely smelling things that we use, we could easily be throwing off our hormones by using these things. Okay, so this is a really, really interesting case. Um, so one of my patients, she came to me uh, a while back and she had some thyroid issues. She had some pretty significant metabolic issues and her biggest concern was, I can't lose weight. She's like, I have a thyroid condition. I've been managing it through Synthroid. I might need you know, a different medication or I might need some adjunct supplements, but I know it's my thyroid. That's my only problem. And I need you to help me lose weight. And I said, okay, well, let's, you know, let's talk a little bit more about other things that are going on. And then we'll obviously do our testing and, and figure out the big picture. And uh, she kind of didn't want to hear it. She's just like, it's my thyroid. I know that it is. Like, I've been to a million doctors. I just need you to, to help me with my thyroid. And I was like, okay, well, I still am going to do my testing and we'll go from there. So as we dug in, we started to talk a little bit more. She was talking about um, pretty significant mood swings, um, not necessarily around her menstrual cycle. Like she was just having mood swings randomly in the middle of the day. Um, she was pretty fatigued, but she was like a, a high achiever. She was still powering through and running on adrenaline as much as she could. Um, she also owned her own company. I think she had a pretty successful company. And she said that her memory loss was so bad that she had to have her assistant follow her around all day and write everything down that she said. 
So in addition to that, she said she had headaches, but she's like, I've had headaches forever. They're really low grade. I can power through, I can manage. And I was like, okay. So we started to talk a little bit about her stress level um, because I always like to, you know, make sure that I take that into consideration. And, she, you know, I figured she had a high stress level. She's an entrepreneur, as am I. I get it. So uh, so we started talking about that. And she's like, well, my stress is not really from my job. My stress is actually because I'm a caretaker for my mom. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, and she's like, yeah, she has vascular dementia. And that was a huge red flag for me. So vascular dementia is dementia that sets in because of poor circulation to the brain that doesn't allow for the brain to get proper oxygen. So if your brain does not get oxygen, it cannot properly fire, it cannot produce neurotransmitters, it cannot, um, the neural, neural pathways do not work. It, 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 you're pretty much suppressing your brain's ability to function if you don't have proper oxygen. So, when she said this, I was like, okay, memory loss is a huge part of the puzzle when you're talking about vac vascular dementia. Headaches is another culprit behind vascular dementia. Also, she also was talking about um, uh, oh, cold hands and feet. So she was pretty much saying that her, her hands and feet were freezing all the time. So pretty much what happened is her her timeline she had her tonsils removed at two years old because she had chronic sore throats. So she had a lot of antibiotic use leading up to the tonsils being removed because of her sore throats and the ear infections. The other thing she said to me, which was another red flag, was that when she was a kid, she was always small for her age. And then she said she had cold hands and feet and she was eventually diagnosed with Raynaud's phenomenon. Okay, so let me piece this together for you guys so you understand. So what happens is, is that she primarily was dealing with cold hands and feet. So if you think about it, the heart in your chest, your hands and feet are the farthest from your heart. They're technically extremities, but so is your head. Your head is an extremity. So when you think about it, to pump the blood up, it has to go against gravity, which is actually harder to get the to blood to the head opposed to the hands and feet. So if you have cold hands and feet, chances are you are probably not getting proper circulation to your brain. That will be a culprit behind memory loss. It's also a culprit behind the pituitary gland in the brain not getting proper oxygenation, which would cause the pituitary gland to be small, which would cause issues with development as a child. So the point is, is that she had improper circulation to her brain since she was a kid. And because of other components that came to the surface, it started to become more and more problematic later in life. And the reason why the tonsil situation was significant is because she then got her tonsils removed, which your tonsils are a filter to keep things out of your lymph nodes as well as your digestive system. So if the tonsils are gone and that filter is not there, then things like strep or dental infections or gingivalis or whatever it is can get into these lymph nodes and start to cause a lot of issues with circulation to the head. Because if these lymph nodes are clogged, that means somebody put their foot on the hose and circulation in and out is not working properly. So then when we started talking more, uh, we realized that the lymphatic system in her head and neck based on our testing was very congested. And it was a big, big part of her circulatory issues. And her lab test revealed she was dealing with something called CCSVI, which is a chronic cerebral uh, venous insufficiency. So what that means is the blood was getting in, but it was having trouble draining out because the congestion in the neck was not allowing the veins to drain properly. So this in turn was not giving her pituitary gland the proper oxygenation that it needed, which was the reason why she had imbalanced hormones and also why she had a thyroid condition. So if you think about it, when you get your thyroid tested, what do they test? They test TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone comes from your pituitary gland. So we're constantly looking at pituitary function, but if your TSH is off, 
we're just like, oh, no, no, no. It's just your thyroid. It's not the pituitary gland, which is not quality information because it can easily be that the pituitary gland <clears throat> is part of the dysfunction. So the point of all of this and the point of this story is that you don't know what you don't know. There's no way for you to know these things if you haven't done the right testing, if nobody has asked better questions, if nobody has dug deeper into your history. It is impossible to know what got you to the place that you are and how are you gonna reverse engineer it so you get better. You have to dig deeper and understand that everything is connected and that there are so many variables when it comes to your hormones. And I know some of you guys are just hopping on the webinar. Um, I definitely would have you listen to some of the earlier parts of the webinar when you get the replay because it's helping you to understand that everything from toxins to the food that you eat to the personal products that you use to um, your neurotransmitters and all of those things are contributing factors to your hormones and your hormonal balance. So it's very, very important to understand the bigger picture behind this. So I do this because I want people to stop accepting their, their new normal and adapting to this and just adapt that you're going to have to live with this terrible PMS for the rest of your life and just adapt that you're going to have to rely on a medication for the rest of your life to fix your thyroid. This is not necessarily the reality of it. It's really a matter of being able to understand what the root cause is and fix it. Uh, did she end up getting well? She did. Um, she fought me tooth and nail, I'll tell you that, because she didn't really, I think it was a scary thing for her because her mom was dealing with the vascular dementia. So um, I, you know, when I had to have that hard conversation with her, I think it was really scary. And she almost didn't want to entertain the idea because she wanted it to just be her thyroid. But when she finally, you know, let that guard down, she, she, we worked together and she did amazing. So, um, and her thyroid condition was resolved without ever actually addressing her thyroid, which is pretty cool. So when it comes to the biggest myth of all is that you have no control over your hormones. I don't know why that says pain. Sorry, webinar people, but, um, it, we're kind of led to believe that things are just going to dysfunction in our bodies and that we are just going to have to deal with it. And really at the end of the day, when you understand the root cause, anything is possible from a healing perspective. And as long as you can figure that out, anything is possible. But if you haven't learned it so far, very rarely does anything look like a textbook. Very rarely is it just oh, you have a hypothyroid and if we keep tweaking your medication, we're just going to balance your TSH and all of your problems are going to go away. Unfortunately, those are the women that I work with. I work with the women that are fed up and they're like, I've been on thyroid medication for 20 years and I feel terrible. I'm still tired. I can't get out of bed. I can't sleep. My hair is falling out. I want to hurt people when I have my period and they just don't feel better. So those are the women that I end up working with is to help them figure out what is the root cause and give them an actual plan that is usually not textbook because I'm looking beyond that. So for those of you that are new to this world and those of you that have been exposed to this world of integrative functional medicine, I want you to just kind of understand some ba a basic understanding. So number one is when you're dealing with conventional medicine, conventional medicine has a lot of restrictions on what they can do because of what insurance tells them they can and cannot do. And that comes down to the testing and the blood work to, to the uh, treatment protocols. And then when you dabble in the functional medicine world, functional medicine is going to do a lot better testing. We're going to dig a lot deeper and we're going to look at your hormones and we're going to look at your neurotransmitters. We're going to, we're going to look at all of those things. But when it comes to functional medicine, because I used to do functional medicine and now I do more integrative, when I did functional medicine, I just felt that my tools were limited. The testing was great, but my tools were limited because a lot of the tools in functional medicine are diet and supplements. So there were certain patients that I worked with that did great with that approach. And there were other patients that didn't and they hit plateaus. So one of my personal mentors told me, he goes, don't call yourself integrative if all you offer is diet and supplements. And I was like, you know what? You're 100% right. And it got me thinking outside of the box and it got me thinking about the big picture. And it started to get me asking better questions in my consultations and asking about, 
stress and asking about was there any type of emotional stress at the time all these symptoms you know kicked in you know are you you know are you dealing with a lot of um burden of other people's energy do people constantly come to you for advice and dump all their problems onto you um you know do you have low-grade infections do you feel like you're losing your memory i ask questions about their neurological system i ask questions about their lifestyle their diet their supplements like how they talk to themselves Themselves, I ask all of those questions and then from there when we're able to use our testing to decipher what's going on we don't just rely on an elimination diet and you know a, a master supplement protocol we're looking at do you need to detox do you need to do some type of um, energetic work like acupuncture or um, do you need some type of physical work do you need neurological work and that's a really cool thing when you're able to understand exactly what the person needs to start their healing journey and to get better in a short amount of time. So I know a lot of people always want to know, like, how does this all work? How do, do you guys work with insurance? Like, how does my blood work work and all that good stuff? So at the end of the day, we serve people. We do not insur serve insurance companies. And because of that, we are out of network. That doesn't mean people don't get reimbursement. A lot of people get great reimbursement. Um, all of your blood work and a lot of those labs are going to go directly through your in-network insurance, which is amazing. Um, and then a lot of people choose to use things like um, health savings accounts and flex savings accounts. But I will tell you, you know, when you make this leap to to get your health figured out, I don't know if you can really put a price on it. I understand every single person's situation is extremely, extremely different, but unfortunately the people that I work with have been on the merry-go-round of copay, 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 and a lot of lost time and a lot of loss of their health because unfortunately by the time they get to me with all the trial and error that they did, they're sicker than they were before they even started to seek out help. So sometimes we have to dabble outside of the in-network in order to get the care that we deserve because we do deserve good care. And we deserve to know what's wrong. We deserve to know what our body is dealing with and we deserve to know what can we do about it. And you know, and that that's everything from lifestyle modifications to dietary modifications to vitamins and herbs that we're deficient in. Like we deserve to know all of those things. And especially if, you know, if that's what you want. So kind of like what I said, healthcare is about answers and solutions. And I think that we forget that. I think we forget that we're supposed to get better. We're literally supposed to get better. That's like the point. And we've gotten away from that. We've settled for just, oh, well, I'll just mask my symptoms or I'll just keep taking this steroid for the rest of my life because I feel terrible when I'm off of it. Or I'm going to keep taking this migraine medication because, you know, I just I just get migraines and this is my fate and, you know, nobody can figure out why and I just have to, like, suppress this. So there's so much that we've just settled for and we've gotten away from even knowing that there is a solution to these things. So that's the really great thing about it is being able to know that there are solutions. So... All of you that are on uh, Instagram Live, I just want to say that it is going to kick me off soon because we are getting close to the hour. So for those of you that are listening that really want the full episode here, you can shoot a um, direct message with your email and we will get that sent over to you within the next day or two. Um, so I, I'm sorry, it always cuts me off in an hour and I tend to talk too much. So uh, so just send me a message if you do want the, um, the full episode. All right. So just a little bit more about some of the diagnostics. I know that for some of you that are listening, you've been kind of probably wondering like, okay, how do you guys figure all this stuff out? Which is a pretty common question. And with the way that we do things is we actually do a pretty significant onboarding process. And through that process, we look at everything from uh, your DNA to different types of chemical uh, sensitivities, environmental allergies, food allergies. We test you for intracellular heavy metals. We look at um, minerals. We also do very, very comprehensive blood work. We look at all different types of infections. We look at thyroid markers. We do a comprehensive hormone panel. Um, we also look at autoimmune markers, inflammatory markers. Literally, we customize it to you, but it is very, very, very comprehensive. And the best part is, is it usually goes through people's insurance. Um, 
And then the other amazing test that we do is called autonomic response testing. And the really cool thing about this is that we took the trial and error out of your healing protocol. And what I mean by that is that we do not guess, we test. And this type of test called autonomic response testing is a huge part of that. So if you come in and we find out that you're dealing with you know, chronic yeast infections, and that's a big part of your hormonal imbalance, we're gonna test for what types of supplements, herbs, remedies, that are going to best work with your specific case and whatever strain of fungus that you have. So everything is customized to the person down to the supplements, the herbs, any types of detox protocols, neurological protocols, emotional protocols. These are things that we use this testing to challenge against your DNA to know what is going to improve your overall health. So this is one of the reasons why we're able to see anywhere between a 60 to 90% reduction in people's symptoms in three months. And we could see that because there's no guessing, there's no cookie cutter protocol, there's no like, let's try this, I'm winging it. It's all customized to you. And we've worked really hard to fine tune this process. And it really is one of the things that makes us stand out tremendously because nobody else is really doing this. Um, so it's extreme, it's of extreme value to our patients. And it is kind of funny because a lot of people become addicted <laughs> to it because they're like, I want to buy a probiotic, but I need to test it. <laughs> so it's a really cool thing because you don't waste money on supplements. Um, I know that before we did this type of testing, I still to this day have probably about $15,000 in a cat in my cabinet downstairs of supplements that were trial and error. Because if you're buying good supplements, we all know they're not cheap. So the last thing you want to do is buy something that is not right for you or doesn't work. Okay, so overall, when it comes to the onboarding process, um, I'm going to give you guys a better understanding of how it all works. But, you know, I just want you to understand that when you actually figure out what your body needs, I don't know if you can really put a price on that. Of course, it has a price. But it's really just a matter of, you know, if you're the person that has been struggling, you can't get out of bed and you can't sleep and you finally figure out why and then you finally figure out how you can heal that and get that better, that's priceless. So it's super, super important to know that you can't really put a price on health. And I just, I think the thing that, uh, you know, makes me the most upset is that we usually don't, we put a price on health until we're really, really, really bad shape. And then when we're fully broken, then we're like, all right, now I guess I just got to pay for it. It's just really trying to like not get yourself to that place so that you can be proactive and you can know what your body needs because it's going to be a lot less to fix you if you're not super sick by the time you seek this type of care out. But for those of you that do want to know how much our onboarding process costs, our onboarding process costs $14.25. Uh, so for those of you that are listening that are like, holy crap, that's a lot of money. I totally get it. But that includes all of your tests, everything that I just mentioned from food allergies, environmental allergies, your um, DNA testing, your autonomic response testing, um, heavy metals, minerals, blood work, all that jazz. So um, we do have a waiting list right now for our practice. So you do have to apply. Um, and it's not really just because of that. We also want to make sure that you are a good fit for us as we are a good fit for you um, because we do things in a very specific way. And we just always want to be super transparent and make sure that it's a really, really, really good fit. But for those of you that have been in this world of functional and integrative medicine, you might be looking at that price and think it's cheap. And I say this because a lot of the lab tests that people do in the functional medicine world rack up to two to four thousand dollars. And that was something that I just personally didn't really enjoy because you were already invested a couple thousand dollars and we didn't even know what was wrong with you yet. And I really want to focus on helping people to spend their money on their healing process opposed to spending tons of money on just figuring out what's wrong and then not having the resources to be able to actually get better. Um, for those of you that are long distance, you can work with us from a distance, which is really, really cool. Um, one of the things I mentioned was how we do DNA based testing. 
you have DNA in your hair. So by simply sending us a hair sample, you can actually um, you can actually get all of your testing done. And then blood work is outsourced close to where you live. Um, so everything that we do, we could do it via Zoom, face to face, and we can also get you set up that your blood work is done at a local lab, and then you send us your hair sample and we do all the rest of the tests. So I wanna take some questions uh, and see if anybody threw anything in here. I didn't have too many questions, um, or I didn't have any questions. So um, so I'm just gonna keep rolling with the, the webinar. But for those of you that actually do wanna take a look at our um, application process, I'm actually gonna post it here because I always forget to do this. Um, so overall, um, I just wanna thank you guys for being here. This was my fastest webinar. I can't believe I did it in an hour. Um, but we are talking about hormones all, excuse me, month long. So we are going to dig deeper and talk about different topics in relation to hormones for the rest of the month. And then we are actually moving into some other topics. We're going to be talking about autoimmunity and then Lyme's disease. But, um, for those of you that have been here, I really hope that you gained a lot from this. And I really hope that you're able to walk away having a better understanding as to why you might have not been able to see success with getting your hormones on track. And this really is such an educational experience, but when you get your own testing done and you figure out exactly what is going on in your body, that's really when this becomes such a breakthrough experience. And it's so empowering because you walk away and you're able to know, not necessarily just how to get better in that moment, but you know how to sustain it moving forward. And I think that's a really important thing to drive home is that none of our protocols are geared towards, let me just make you feel better in the moment. Our protocols are geared towards, let's nip this in the butt and be able to get you better in a short amount of time and let's give you the tools to sustain it. Because that is my biggest issue with medicine is that nothing creates sustainability. You know, you take a medication, but when you come off that medication, you, you feel like crap again. So the goal is, for us at least, to create sustainability with the healing process and for you to really know what your body needs from a maintenance perspective. You know, I know for myself, I learned that, you know, everybody takes like a multivitamin. They take a multivitamin and a vitamin D and a probiotic. And that's like one of the ways that a lot of us maintain our health. And for me, I used to do that. And then I realized that my most vulnerable system was my lymphatic system, my lymph nodes. And what I needed to do was I needed to sweat. So now I make sure I do an infrared sauna anywhere between one to two times a week. And I, I do it that often because I have one, but I do that. And that is my best maintenance opposed to thinking that I just need to take all these vitamins and minerals all the time. So I think that that was like just very eye opening to me knowing that, okay, the way that I maintain my body is very different than somebody else. So it's really fascinating when you learn these things and you're able to apply it um, because it really is just, you know, you feel really empowered and you feel really in control. So I thank you guys for being here with me. Um, definitely check out our website if you have more questions. If you do have questions and you want to talk to someone at our office, you can set up a strategy call either through the link provided or you could set up a strategy call through our website and you can talk with our client services team and they will give you a ton more information about how it all works and then we can get you rolling from there. So I thank you guys. I hope you join me um, next week and also into the future months with our uh, other topics that we're gonna be covering. And also uh, please share the replay uh, because it's really, really amazing for people to get this information that have been looking for it. There's a lot of people that are really struggling with their health and it's just great to be able to spread the word. All right, guys, I will see you next week. Thank you for being here.